Okay. All right. So, so today we're going to uh, continue with short functions. Okay. So, so last time we saw the the combinatorial definition. So, um, yeah. So I guess maybe is this readable? Yeah. Okay. So, so last time we saw uh, we we sketched why um, e lambda, h lambda, and p lambda are bases. And some of that is on the worksheet, okay? Um, and in particular, I mean, for uh, I want to mention that we we know that the elementary satisfy this relation, this journey function, okay? Nope, nope. And we know that uh, maybe I can remove the. Uh, and we know that the completes satisfy this okay so so we have that e of t times h of minus t is one okay okay and we use that to show that if if we knew that the lambdas were independent then the h's were in linearly independent okay we use that to show okay but but there is a uh, there is an involution, so there is an involution omega from the ring of symmetric functions to the ring of symmetric functions that takes E n to H n. So it's defined like this. Okay? And you can check that it is indeed an involution. So so kind of but from so from star you can check that it's an evolution. I.e. that it's that it sends um, H n to E n. Okay? So it's it's it's, it's its own inverse. Okay? So 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 if you remember if you extract a, if you take star and you extract the coefficient of e of t to the n, you get a relation between the E n's and the H n's. So if so if you apply omega to that you you'll the o so the the e's get swapped to h's so the only um, yes so so then the map of h n has to be e n okay so this is h n here uh, so so what I mean is that uh, from here we we have that zero is equal to the sum from i equals zero to n of minus i to the i e to the i h n minus i so if you apply omega you get zero um, h i omega of h n minus i, okay. And the o and the only solution to that equation has to be if the h and i's are being sent are being sent to e to the uh, e, are being sent to e, okay. Okay. Anyway, so so, so yeah, I, I didn't mention that. Last time. Any questions? Okay. So there is this involution. Okay, and and last time we we defined we defined the the, the sure functions as the summation over all semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda, and we would just take this monomial, which is like basically um, x one to the number of ones in T, x two to the number of twos in T and so on, okay? So there it's defined as this kind of generating function and we showed that it's symmetric, okay? So we showed, um, we showed that S lambda is symmetric. And uh, a, a basis for um, the ring of symmetric functions because Essentially, from this definition, it follows that S lambda is the sum, if you, expa if you express it in the monomials, it's the, the coefficient is going to be the number of semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda and content mu. Okay? And by Young's rule, this change of basis is, is, is triangular. Okay? In dominance order. 
Okay, and then k lambda lambda is one. You proved it in the homework, I think. So okay, so it's okay. Um, and to show it's symmetric, we we gave two proofs. Okay, so what what were the two proofs? The the one was algebraic. So we use the fact that the if you take the Koska number, if you fix lambda and you permute two parts of mu, if you change, if you swap two parts of your content, the number of semi-standard tableau stays the same because it's just because the the these are these are multiplicities of the spec module s lambda on a on a m mu, the tabloids of, of shape mu, and if you swap two part two rows of mu, you 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 get the same. I mean that's a bijection, so you get so so the the modules have the same dimension, okay. And we also gave, but we also gave a combinatorial one, okay? So which is more in line with kind of the, the techniques of this chapter. So we did this involution by Knuth. So we, we said that if, for example, if you have um, a semi-standard tableau um, that's like this, um, Uh, something like this, for example. Okay, so say that I want to swap the twos, and if, if I want to swap um, the twos and threes, okay. So imagine I want to swap the twos and threes here. Is is this readable? Yeah. So we do some kind of pairing here. So we look at when a two and a three are to get are one above the other, okay? Um, then we look when there a two is alone, when a three is alone, okay? Um, and here the two would be alone here, okay? Okay, so this is mm, not very not very readable, but. Um, so we swap. So so we so we're gonna swap the. No, so so we're gonna do is we're gonna whenever we have a two and a three on top of each other, we're gonna leave them the same. And whenever uh, we have twos and threes that are by themselves, we're gonna swap the number, uh, like how many of them are there, okay? So here I would do um, one 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 two 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 three three three. So I don't change that. But here in the first row, I have one two and two threes. So I would swap to um, two twos and a three. Okay, so so I I change from I change from one three. You see, I, I change from one three and two threes to two twos and one three. And here I would uh, swap these uh, all to um, threes. Okay, so here this would be threes. Okay, and this would stay the same. Okay, so this would be. Okay, so 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 so, so, so uh, and this is a, and this is all and this is an involution. So 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 this, if I were to apply this now, if I if this is t and this is t prime, if I apply this to t prime, I get back t. Okay, so, and and how many twos do you have here? So how many twos? And how many threes do you have here? So how many twos do you have here? On the first row, there's four. Second row, there's three. So there's seven. How many threes are there? There's five threes. Yeah? And now here, how many twos are there? And how many threes? How many twos are there? We have five and, and, and seven threes. OK, so, so, then, so that swaps the content, OK? Is the bi is the bijection clear? The involution clear? Or any questions? Yes, William. Yes.
Oh, you were trying to find a pair? Yeah, I just wondered, uh, the o there are other strategies to show that it's symmetric. Um, so, so not on top of my head, but maybe I need to look at the proof. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, um, there's there's other proofs to show that it's a symmetric function. Uh, maybe we we might. Yeah, maybe uh, as we see other expansions, maybe the my other ideas of how to show that it's symmetric might pop up. But, uh, but okay. Yeah, for example, we're gonna see. It. But 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 say, but I think maybe Will is asking if you're trying to show that k lambda mu is equal to k lambda mu prime by switching two, how else can you show that besides this involution? Yeah, yeah. But um, but maybe this is the proof uh, by the book, the commentarial proof by the book, say, by and and it's by Donald Knuth. Okay, okay, okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I guess you could you could if you want to show that then no matter how you permute the co the content you get the same number of tableau you could first express your permutation into transpositions and then use this involution. Is that what you're asking? Oh, I see. If it's independent, uh, probably yeah, yeah, yes. I think I think you, I, th I don't th I think it I think it depends. Yeah, I, it's a good question. I I, th I would expect it to depend on how you decompose it, but maybe it's worth doing an example. Okay. Okay. So so. Okay. So that's so, so okay. So that's good, right? So uh, any, so we we have our sure functions, and we're going to stay with sure functions f for like pretty much the rest of the course, which not much left. But um, okay. So remember our, our 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 hexagon here. So we I forgot how we label things, but um, yeah, maybe yeah, I should be consistent. So let me take a peek. Um, So we had elementaries complete. Okay, maybe I should just copy this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. So okay, that's our guy. Or so we call I call this we call this friendly thing the hexagon, like the hexagon, and and then um, okay. So we basically have done this. So we're kind of, we just kind of did done this, okay? Oh, that's not real, okay. We've done this one, okay? But now let's see, uh, let's, le le today we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see these two, okay? That today we're gonna see what this is, okay? Okay? And, uh, and there are different ways of seeing the sure function in some sense, okay? And, and then I'll mention the, the classical definition. So, so today, the plan today is to look at the Jacobi-Trudy identities. And if we have time, the yeah, I'll, I'll state it, the bialternant formula for the sure functions. And this was kind of the, the this was the original definition of the sure, of a sure function. Okay, and and so um, so Schur was a German mathematician, and Schur was a student of of Frobenius, and Frobenius was kind of the creator of like of, of represent like the, f the founder of representation theory. Um, and so yeah, I guess uh, not surprisingly, Schur was a student. Okay, so but the original definition is this bialternant formula we'll see today. Okay, uh, and I think uh, Jacobi, we've probably heard of Jacobi. Um, so Trudy was a was a student of Jacobi. All right. Uh, okay. So, 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 what are these? Okay. So let's um, let's state them. So, and and, the, and both formulas involve determinants. Okay. So our theorem today is the following: If you take um, if lambda has L parts, okay, then the sure function S lambda is a determinant of complete symmetric functions. The following determinant. Okay, where this is an L by L determinant. Okay, and and if you um, yeah, that's kind of yeah. 
I like the music. I think it works well with this. Um, and there's also a, a determinant formula for th in terms of the elementary symmetric functions. Okay, but uh, but the notice that this is for the conjugate. So lambda prime is the conjugate of the conjugate of lambda. Okay. So 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 so, so let's do an example before we, we we go into the proof. Yes. So it's lambda i, you mean in the inside the matrix? Inside the matrix. Yeah, so it's lambda i minus i plus j. I plus j, okay. With this one is, yeah. Okay? That's a plus, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay? So, let, so let's look at, so, and these are really amazing formulas. So, 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 so let's look at some, uh, let's look at an example and some corollaries before we go into the proof. Okay, so let's talk. Let's maybe make um, let's make a, a, a let's make a, some tableau. So what's uh, what could be an interesting Schultz function? So let's try um, let's try what I, what I have. I think I have three three one. Let's try three one. Okay. So let, can we maybe what's the expansion in terms of monomials of this? So what kind of semi-standard tableau can I have? So I can I, I have shape three one. So I could have one two three four, or I could do one two four three, or one three four two. So those would be the standard ones, okay? So the coefficient of m one 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 would be three, okay? Yeah. Now oh. I could have like one, 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 two. And that's the only possibility if my content is three, one. If I have three ones and at one, two, this is the only possibility. M more, I mean, up to changing what one and two is, but okay. Um, what else could I have? I could have content two, two. So how many possibilities are there? I could have one, one, two, two. Anything else? Right. One. Yeah, because I so I, I I have two ones, so they have to be on the first row, and then these two twos are are forced. Okay, so this is one. Yeah. Okay, and anything else? Any other contents I could have? Four. I could have. I, so so I cannot have four because I below that in that in that second column I have to strict. I have to be strict on that on, the, on that on that first row on the first column. Sorry. Anything else I could have? So I could have. Yeah. Let's try two one one. So I could have one one two three. Anything else? I could do one one three two. So this is two. Okay. So that's the monomial expansion of the true function. Yeah. Yeah. Are any questions with how we got this? So we counted. So the, the, parti the, parti the, 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 the partition of the monomial tells us how, how the, the alphabet that we have. Okay. Okay, so what, is, what are these identities telling us then? So Jacobi, so let's call this Jacobi, so this is Jacobi Trudy. Okay. So what does Jacobi Trudy say? So okay, so I have, my length is two, so my determinant should be two by two. Okay. So how do you feel this determinant? So the, the diagonal are the parts of lambda. So I should have h3 and h1, because my partition is 3, 1. OK? And now as I go along a row, I increase, from the, I increase by, by 1 each time from the di diagonal. So this should be h4, because I go from 3 to 4. OK? And now if I go on, if I go on the left, on, my, on a row, I subtract. So I would, this would be h0. OK? But h0 and e0 are just 1. OK? So this is just, this is just 1. OK? So, 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 if you, so here I'm telling you what the, that formula in the, inside the, the matrix means. OK? So diagonal are the parts of lambda. As you go to the right to the that, from each row, you increase by 1. You go from the left, you decrease by 1. OK? So this is saying that this is h31 minus h4. OK? Yes? 
Yeah, that's zero. Good question. Yeah. So you can get negatives. Uh, uh, yeah. So that that's zero. Yeah. Good. We'll see that in, in one example. Okay. Okay. And and you maybe you can check that this if you expand this in the monomials, which you're kind of doing a little bit on the homework, you'll get this. Okay. Okay. So you can check that. So check that these are the same. Okay. Okay. What is the now? What is the other? There's a formula also for the e's. So what is that? So. So we need to look at the conjugate. So what's the conjugate of 3, 1? Two, 2, 1, 1, right? So how do you know that? You, you, take, you take this, and you read it column by column. Okay, so you have 2, 1, 1. That's the conjugate. Okay, or, or take the transpose of lambda. Okay? So now this is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay? So this is saying that S uh, S two one one. So you're saying S two one one is the determinant. Okay. And here you would have E two. E one, E one. Okay, and same 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 thing. I increase on my rows and I decrease if I go to the right and decrease if I go to the left. No, here we're doing s. We're doing s of the conjugate. It's a different function. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, you're right. You can you can, you can write s. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, so so let me do everything. Yeah. So so what Jesse's saying is that I, you know, if, if in my second row here, I could remove the prime and put the prime here, and then I would be computing the same determinant. So so yes. Yeah, so maybe um, yeah. Okay. So just to be. So this would also be equal if you want to get the same s lambda. This would be the determinant of the h lambda prime i minus i plus j. OK? OK? So this would be 1 less than or equal i j less than or equal l prime. OK? So, 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 so maybe, if, yeah, if maybe if I want to compute the same one. Um, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Oh, yeah, so this should be S31. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, okay, so if I want to get if I want to get the same this one, then I should do this. Okay, so lambda prime is 2, 1, 1. So I would do E3, E4, E2. You see how I did that? I just increased. Some, some of you look confused. Can I, should I go over? Yes, William. Okay, may maybe maybe to be yeah sorry okay maybe yeah maybe maybe let me just do it let me just do this yeah let me just do this and then let's forget about this no 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 I, it's it, it's confusing okay 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 so 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 my diagonal is e two one one I increase in the rows e three four e two okay and I decrease when I go to the left so this would be e zero so this is one yes this would be e zero so it's one. And this would be e to the minus 1, but that doesn't exist, so that's 0. OK? And now you calculate this determinant. So this would be e to 1, 1. OK? So this is the, yeah, I kind of need a cursor. I need to figure out how to get a cursor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes? Yeah, good. Here? Why is it 0? Or OK. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, so okay, this should be, this should be e zero here. E zero. Yeah, when you go to, when you go to the right of the diagonal, you increase by one. When you go to the left, you decrease by one. Oh, okay. okay. And then this is the same as the determinant of e two, e three, e four, one, e one, e two, zero, one. E one, okay, and if you calculate the determinant, it's going to be e to one minus 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 e one one. 
yeah, e three one minus e two two plus e four. Okay, and check that that this is the same. Okay, yes. Uh, because uh, E zero is like you don't add the, okay, because we can think of E i as the sum of square premonomials of degree i. So the, the, the only square premonomial of degree zero is one. And H n would be the sum of all monomials of degree n. So when H zero would be one, okay? And but think of it as more like you have the degree. Think of it as, the, I, I consider all the monomials of degree and in the homework, you have this, you have to do this thing when you evaluate by ones. Uh, oh, um, okay, but I guess we're considering only, like we're only considering uh, one monomial, w one term for each monomial. So, so like in E's, all our coefficients are one. Does that make, does, is that okay? Is that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes? Be, be, yeah, because because the formula is in terms of the conjugate. So this the size here is L by L, and the size here is L prime by L prime, where L prime is the length of the conjugate. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, and you, so you can please check that these are the right things. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so let's get more corollaries out of this. Um, okay. So, so some corollaries. Um, if you apply the involution that I defined at the beginning of the class to S lambda, you're going to get S lambda prime. Why is that? Well, um, let's go here, okay? Well, okay, so proof maybe just, so the, wh what's the proof? Well, the proof is that S lambda is a determinant of H lambda I minus I plus J, right? Apply omega on both sides, okay? And this is the same as applying omega inside the determinant. Yeah? And that becomes a determinant of E's. Okay? And this, by the, by the second Jacobi truly identity is just S of this. Okay? Okay? Is that okay? Okay. A any questions? Okay. Second corollary. So, so remember, if lambda is a partition of n, what is the coefficient of x1, xn? of S lambda, which is the same as what's the coefficient of the monomial M01 in S lambda. What was this equal to? Yeah, this is the number of standard tableau of F lambda, okay? So there is a, a ring homomorphism on S on on, this, on symmetric functions, okay, uh, called the uh, the exponential specialization, okay, and this has the property that when you apply when you apply it to S lambda, you're going to get a number, and that number, well, yeah, okay, it's well, the, it's yeah, you get maybe I should you get t. So it's a, it's a ring homomorphism from this to polynomials. Okay, I mean this is so I'm not being I'm, I'm not going to be being very precise here, but okay. So um, if you do this, oh no no no, you're going to get f lambda t to the n over n factorial. Okay. So this is a bit this, I, I, this is yeah this, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not explaining this, but it's more or less extracting the coefficient of x1 x2 xn. Okay. So when you when you let t to be one, you you let's call this x one. So when you apply this to to the to the short function, you're going to get f lambda to the n factorial. Okay. 
And when you apply it to to a, to a to a complete to to a, to a complete symmetric function H n. Okay. Well, this is the same as a sure function. Well, yeah, I guess in the worksheet you're going to see that the complete symmetric function of of, of of n is the same as the sure function of one row of n. And that only has one standard tableau, just putting one everything here. So this would be just one over n factorial. Okay. Okay. So 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 I'm not so so if you apply this this specialization. Okay, to the Jacobi Trudy identity, you get that the number of standard tableau of shape lambda is n factorial determinant of one over the factorial lambda i minus i plus j factorial. Okay. So we get okay for so maybe ah, up to proving the Jacobi Trudy identity, we get the first formula for the number of standard Young tableau. Okay, so, 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 so I just take the Jacobi Trudy, okay, which is the first line there. I apply this magical map, x1, okay? And on the left, I get f lambda over n factorial. And on the other side, I get a, a determinant of what happens to the hn's, they become 1 over n factorial. So the, the h lambda i minus i plus j becomes 1 over lambda i minus i plus j factorial. Yes? Uh, Xt has. Yeah, so this is the, this is the name of the ring homomorphism. Yeah, yeah, the ring homomorphism. It's called. A, it's yeah, a ring homomorphism. Yeah, okay. And, and and there's other specializations. For example, in the homework, you're evaluating n ones. That's also a, a specialization. Okay, if you control the number of 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 ones, you evaluate that. That's another. So so. so so you can think of like basically you can symmetric functions have all these variables and there's diff there's different ways to project to say polynomials or or, or two integers okay so so um, okay okay so maybe okay I ha I want to have a little fun with this so uh, let's look at what's the number of standard tableau of shape three three okay so this should be a two by two determinant yes. So the formula says that I take n. What's n? Six. And what's going to be the determinant? So I have one over three factorial, one over three factorial, because the, the factorials are just the same rule of like the diagonal is the partition. You add one when you go to the right, subtract one. Yes, please. I I, I kind of ev evaluate t to be equal to one. I, like maybe, yeah. yeah. If you want, like, take it as a black box that you have this thing that takes s lambda to f lambda over n factorial and takes, okay. But it's essentially extracting a coefficient. It's just that it's not clear why that's a ring homomorphism, but it is. Yes. Is there something like f to be one t just for this number? Um, because you get uh, a lambda zero with or, or rule of lambda with one. So zero factorial is oh. one, and minus one factorial is. Yeah, w w if, it's, if, so if there's no negative factorials, if there's a negative factorial, take that as a zero. Okay, just as you did here, right? When we had a zero here. But isn't it one over zero then? I mean, here you would just stay zero. Like that entry is zero to begin with, so so it stays zero. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, it's. There's a little bit of kind of shorthand here, abuse of notation in some sense to, okay. So here it would be four factorial, and here it would be one over two factorial. Okay, so six, six factorial is kind of huge, 720. And here we have, what do we have? We have 1 over 36 minus 1 over 48. Okay. Okay, so what is this? Um, so we here we're going to have 5 times 4. Everything else cancels, I think. Minus and 6 factorial over 48. What is that? Um, so you get six. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm here. So this is four, what's forty-eight? It's four. It's I guess it's four factorial two. So all this goes three. So I have 
20 minus 15. Okay, and that's a Catalan number, but okay. 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 It's a good question. Why is it always an integer? I mean, the reason is because it's counting standard tableau. <laughs> but yeah, no, but no, no, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, not clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so if you take, if you take standard tableau of two rows of size n, that's always going to be a Catalan number, okay? No, 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 it's better. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, there, it's not clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would a sum of factorials like that be an integer? Uh, like an alternating sum of, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, okay, so, oof. okay, so, good. So Jacobi Trudy is a really, really remarkable identity. Um, okay, so we should maybe, we should be this, um, yeah, I guess maybe before I go to the proof, I want to tell you about the, the by alternate formula, and then I'll go into the proof of Jacobi Trudy, okay? So, um, now let me talk about the original, definition of a Schur function. Okay, and, and the, so the proof of, of Jacobi Trudy is postponed, just post momentarily postponed. Okay. Yes. Okay, oh, you want the proof of the corollary? Proof, okay, yep. Oh no, sorry, it's like, so we have this. Okay, and I'm going to apply, I'm gonna apply this X1 map, okay? And it's, and it's like a, it's a ring homomorphism. So I'm gonna get X of S lambda, the determinant of X of H lambda i minus i plus j, okay? And then if you take it as a black box, what I've told you to kind of trust me, this is gonna be f lambda over n factorial, and this is gonna be determinant, and then the h's get sent to one over the factorial. And it's also true for the e's, so you would just get, okay? Okay? And that's, yeah, because it's a, it's a, it's a, this is a ring, well, I mean, when you have the t's, it's a ring homomorphism, and uh, so I, I should say here that xt is a ring homomorphism. So in some sense, I'm applying xt, and then I take t to be equal to 1. Because it's a sub, because you have a, it's a, so it's a, it's a, the determinant is al alternating sum, and then you apply to each term, and then you re and then it's, it splits the H's, and, and yeah, okay, yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so, okay, but now let me talk about the original definition of the Schur function, just to go kind of historically. Um, okay, so I need to define what an alternant is. So imagine I have a composition m mu1 to mu l. So the alternant of mu is going to be the sum. Uh, so I'm going to call it a mu, and it's going to be this. It's, it's going to be the sum of um, permutations in S L, the sine of pi, and uh, x to the so the monomial uh, okay x to the yeah okay yeah, yeah the best way to say it is pi acting on x one to the mu one x two to the mu two x l to the mu l okay yes yes oh. Yes, of course. So up to here is okay? Yeah. And I just multiply by, and I just multiply by n factorial. 
Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so if you be, so, I claim that when you apply this to a short function, you get f lambda over n factorial. I get that, but I was asking about that. Yes, yes, yes. So, so h n, I claim that the complete symmetric function is the same as a short function of one row of size n. Okay, and that's it's part of the worksheet, but so. Yeah, so it's part of the worksheet. But so if you so, so maybe, if, if, if because if you look at a semi-standard tableau in one row, it's just going to be a bunch of ones, a bunch of twos, a bunch of threes. So it, well, you, you'll see that in the in the worksheet in the, in the worksheet. Okay. Okay. So it's s lambda, uh, s n. Sorry. So how many standard tableau are there of shape one row of n? You have to put the numbers one, two, three up to n, increasing. So you only have to put them one, two, three. There's only one standard tableau of that shape. So, 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 so yeah. So here, so here, maybe. Uh, so, so this maybe just this is so maybe here. So this here is f of n. So this one here you see is just the number of standard tableau of one row. Because if you have one row, I can only put one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Sorry. So, so, so it's one. Yeah. Sorry. So, so, so that's. That's what happened there. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and the, the, um, yeah, you, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. So, so, so is, is maybe there's other ways to see this. Maybe from the techniques, if you see the how we're going to prove the Jacobi Turing formula, you see maybe other techniques. Um, to, to to get this, yeah, or to explain maybe why maybe another way of maybe approaching the proving this directly. If you want. Um, and, and yeah, and historically, this determinant formula existed before the Hookland formula, so people knew this determinant. Um, but then people realized that there was a product formula, and and the, and the story is very very nice. Maybe for the projects about the Hookland formula, you could discuss. I think the the Bruce Hagen has a nice account of that. Uh, it because part of it happened in Michigan State where he he's a right. Not while he was there, but it happened <laughs> where he was working. Um, so it's very, I think it was proved in the matter of two or three days, and someone else was proving it at the same time. Like, very, I don't know, very strange. But so, yeah, I hope, yeah, so I, the, the pro. No, 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 yeah, 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 but, 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 but uh, yeah, I would encourage the, the project that you tell that story in the, pro in the, pro in the presentation. It's really interesting. Um, okay. Okay, so, so the al an alternate, let me define, it's defined this way. Okay. So and uh, well, I don't know, yeah. So and, and if you notice, this is not this this function is not symmetric. It's uh, it's alternating. So we, we, so basically, if if you apply um, like if you apply a permutation to this, it's not going to be you're not going to get a mu. You're going to get the sine of this times a mu. Okay, so 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 it's okay, so it's so, so it's it's not symmetric; it's alternating. Okay, but this sum should remind you of something. It looks like a determinant. So this is really just the determinant of a matrix X i mu j. Okay. So, so a determinant of monomials is an example of something that's alternating okay okay and uh, um, alternating functions are not symmetric but they're close to being symmetric so if you for, for example maybe take the product of two alternating things there's a it's, you're going to get something symmetric or if you take a quotient of two alternating things you're going to get something symmetric so that's kind of where we're kind of going okay um, so a special case is when delta is, is when you is when mu is is is, a, is, a, is when mu is a, is a staircase. Okay, so in this case, a delta is the determinant of x i uh, j minus one. Okay, and maybe let me let me do an example so you see. You, this is a this is a known friend of yours. So what would this be? This would be the determinant 
so my rows I have x1, 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 x2, 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 x3, 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 x3 and my powers are uh, 0, 0, 0, uh, not quite. Uh, two, 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 one, 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 zero, zero, zero. Have you seen this determinant before? Yes, the van der Monde, exactly. So this is the this is the van der Monde. So this is the product of x one minus x two, x one minus x three, times x two minus x three. It's the van der Monde. Okay. So indeed, this is. This is the product of xi, you know, kind of maybe one of the most famous determinants. Yeah. So the van der Monde is a, is is, a, is, a, is an example of a, of an alternate of one of these. Uh, yeah, I guess these are these, these are called uh, alternants. Yeah. So this is the alternate. Okay. Okay. Are we are we on the same page? Okay. Okay. Are you so are you ready for the original definition? So theorem, so let's call it a theorem, but it's kind of a definition historically. If lambda is a partition of L, of L parts, okay, then the sure polynomial, so because I'm only going to cap myself to n variables here, it's, gonna, it's the ratio of A mu plus delta, this is delta. So it's so it's called the bialternant formula. Okay? Because so it's called the it's called the bialternant formula. Okay? So Okay, so so, so I mean I I, I cannot so it's a, it's a, it's only it's only an equality of polynomials because my determinant is capped. I, I cannot like I only have a certain number of variables. Okay. So let's do, let's do, let's look at our running example. Okay. So so what was our running example? Our running example was S three one S three one yeah. Okay. Okay. So L equals two. Okay. So you're gonna help me with this. So what is my so? Oh, of course. Yeah. This is confusing. There should be a. This is this is sorry. Ah, this is lambda here. Lambda plus delta over a delta. Okay. Well, okay. There's no. I mean, I guess n has to be yeah. N has to be. Um, n has to be, I guess, less than or. Um yeah, 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 you're right. I should just Yeah. I should be N here. Yeah. Uh am I um yes, N N N is the size of lambda. Yeah, so sorry, did you? Yeah. Yeah. The Yeah, in this case N is the length of lambda. Yeah, I guess if you you could add parts of zero, so so yeah, I guess uh, in general, yeah, maybe n as long as n is less than or equal l of lambda, that would be okay. So maybe I should. How can I? Uh, I mean, as written, I guess I um, I only have the the size of the matrix many variables. So um, yeah, but let's see how we could make it. Yeah, so so so, so let's see this example and that, that will help. So we, we had that before we had computed S31 and we had found that it was 3 S111 um what was it uh S31 plus S22 plus S211 I think we had computed this okay okay so if you do S31 and you only have two variables what survives Oh, ah, what am I doing? This is monomial. Okay. So, if if you only if you only use two variables, what monomials are going to appear? Are going to the first one doesn't appear. 
and neither is the third one. So you only have, you only, you're only going to have m31 x1 x2 plus m22 x1 x2. So this would be just x1 cube x2 plus x1 x2 cube. Okay. And this would be x1 squared x2 squared. Yes, Christian. Uh, any yes. Okay, and let's check if this is what you get from the determinant. So the by alternate formula would say that you are on the bottom we would have the van der Mond, which is just x1 minus x2. And on the top we would have a determinant of a 2 by 2 determinant. And here, um, lambda plus delta, delta is just 1 comma 0, would just be 4, 1. Okay? So here I would have 4, and here 1. Any questions how I got the determinant, how I wrote the matrix? Okay, like A, look, the, the formula is you take xi mu j. So, so, uh, yeah, so this thing here is the determinant, th th the top of xi lambda j plus, and delta j is just j minus 1. Okay. Okay, but, or, or okay. But, okay, so, so we have x1 to the 4 times x2 to the 1 minus x1 x2 to the 4 over x1 minus x2 okay and you can factor out x1 x2 and you get x1 cubed minus x2 cubed over x1 minus x2 okay and now you can cancel we can cancel this here with here and here we get x1 squared plus x1 x2 plus x2 squared so at the end we get x1 cubed x2 plus x1 cubed x2 plus um, x1 squared x2 squared, okay? Which is the thing we had. Okay. Okay, so that's So, um, okay, okay. So, so, so maybe, so maybe um, okay. So, so, so we have, so we have. Uh, so, so, of course, I need to prove the jacobi turi formula. And I need to prove the bialternant formula. Uh, let me sketch the proof of the jacobi turi formula. Okay, is that okay or? So that was that was the original definition. Uh, I of 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 sure. Sorry, of say sure. Uh, like I mean, that's not that, that's not so. That, I mean, because that, I guess that's not so bad because you so you, you know how you prove the Vandermond. You 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 show one way to prove the Vandermond is that you show that setting x i to e equals x j gives you gives you gives you zero. So if you set, because that would make any two rows the same, so that would be zero. So you know that each of those things divi divides the determinant. So at least here in the bialternant, the same thing happens, right? So if you set any two variables to be equal, the, you're going to get a zero determinant. So you know that the, the van der Mond divides, yeah. divides it, okay? And if you take a ratio of two alternants, that's going to be symmetric. So at least, yeah, but okay, so you can define a symmetric polynomial. Why is it going to be linearly independent and all that? That's, that's not clear. So, 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 so I, yeah, I guess so. Bruce Hagen says he says that the true functions are protean. So there's the way different ways of seeing it gives you different perspectives on it. Um, but it's yes, completely not clear at all that this was the original definition, but that it ends up being the Turing function for semi-standard tableau. That's okay. Um, now, when we teach us in combinatorics, we start more with the combinatorial definition, and we get to these more algebraic definitions. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, 
So let me sketch. Let me sketch the the proof the, the proof of the Jacobi tree formula. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, outline the proof of the Jacobi tree identity, and this is uh, using an idea of Gessel and Vienno. Okay, so so the idea is maybe that the the, the number of terms of an elementary symmetric function or a complete symmetric function, and this is kind of from your homework, these are given by binomial coefficients, uh, they encode lattice paths, okay, which we know are counted by binomial coefficients. Okay? And and then we can and then and then that's the beginning and then and then both the determinant and the sure function can be viewed as encoding certain tuples of lattice paths. Okay, so let's see let, let's that's the idea but let's break it down. Okay? So here's a, a dig path from going from the bottom here to the top, and I, I, since since I, since my well, I, I in general I have infinitely many variables, then I'm going to allow them to kind of keep going up. Okay. So I'm going to ha when I have a path, I'm going to label the horizontal steps, and we're going to have two kinds of labelings. The first labeling is by height, so one, two, two, four. Okay. Okay. And the other one is by kind of the the step number. So here. I would have one, three is the third step, I go horizontal, fourth step, and then until the sixth, the seventh step, I go again horizontal, okay? This is gonna be the H labeling, the one on the left, and the other one is the E labeling, okay? Okay, and we're gonna focus mostly with the H labeling, but the proofs for the E labeling are similar, okay? Okay, okay, and here's the first key insight. The complete symmetric function of n, the sum of all degree n polynomials, you can view it as this weighted generating function of lattice paths from a, b, so some point, to a point that's n columns to the right, okay, and, and, and arbitrarily high, okay? We need to go arbitrarily high because my hn has infinitely many variables, so I can keep, it's like a, I have a very, very tall, infinite tall, like a skinny rectangle. Okay. Is that is that okay? Because you're just like we we order the variables. We have i in the H n. We have i one less than or equal i two less than or equal i three, i n. Those are heights of a path of degree n. So I only go I only go uh, n. Uh, I, it only has width n, but I can keep going up because I don't cap my I don't truncate my variables. That's the first. Is that, how is that, how is that? Okay. And you could say the same thing for the n if you do this e-labeling, because if you label things by step number, you're never gonna have a square. So you're gonna have i1 less than i2, less than i, and so on, less than i. Okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. Okay, so now what happens when you mul multiply a bunch of a bunch of um, HNs together. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stick to HNs. Well, that can be interpreted as a generating function for a tuple of uh, uh, of L lattice paths. If I if, if I have H lambda one times H lambda two times H lambda L, if each H, if each H lambda I is a is a is a weighted generating function of one path, then multiplying L of them gives me the contribution of L. Okay, so, so let's give some definitions for this. So I have some starting points, u1 up to ul. I have some endpoints, v1 up to vl. These are fixed starting points and endpoints. Okay? And I'm going to consider a tuple p of, k of l paths, little p1 up to pl, where pi goes, goes from ui to some vi. So I'm going to, but uh, the, 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 they start at different endpoints and finish at different Sorry, they start at different starting points and finish at different endpoints, so I can encode the endpoints by a permutation. Okay, so 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 okay, so this goes from here to here, from here to here, from here to he here, and from here to here. Okay? Yes. Yes, yeah, so, so I'm going to tell you exactly what the starting points and endpoints are in a second. Yeah, and that's that's important. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. So here they start like this, and, and the permutation encodes how, how, like how different did you end up? Yeah. So here, for example, the first one ended up in the first en in the last in the first endpoint. The second path, the green one, ended up in the last endpoint. The third path ended on the second relative endpoint, and the third path ended on the on the. Uh, the fourth one ended on the third end, okay? And that's what the permutation is encoding. Is that okay? And then the x's just tells me how many steps the I have at each height. So I have four steps in total at height two, two steps at height three, and one step at height four, which is it's just multiplying the, the weights. Like how many steps you have at each height. And then um, the sign of the, I'm going to say that the sign of the path configuration is the sign of the permutation of the, your endpoints. Okay? Okay, so how do we prove this Jacobi Truri identity? Okay. So I'm trying to prove S lambda is a determinant of the complete. I'm going to say that my starting points are going to be at height zero, but the i starting point is at coordinates 1 minus i comma 0. And my endpoints are kind of, like where I want my matrices to kind of a little bit, well, uh, not well, yeah, yeah. so I'm going to say that they're at, at in lambda i minus i plus 1 and I don't care about the height, okay? So these are very specific fixed points that I chose, okay? And then each entry of the matrix Okay, is going to be the generating function from paths from the jth starting point to the ith endpoint, because now this becomes j i m one minus j, and it, and it's going to be exactly the the weight. Like if you go from i m one minus j to this, the total displacement is exactly lam lambda i minus i plus j, the total ho uh, horizontal displacement. Okay. So then each I know I, so then each matrix entry I know exactly what kind of starting point and end point is, is the, the, it's the, I know exactly where, where I'm going from. Okay? So then the determinant, just by the formula you know of the determinant, is going to be the sum of all like it's going to be an alternating sum of all these tuples of L paths, okay, going from uh, UI to VP, V pi I. Just by definition, by construction, is just that. Okay, because the permutation, uh, uh, you see, a term in the determinant with entries pi one comma one, pi l comma l is going to be exactly the, pa the, pa the the tuple of paths where pi i goes from u i to v pi i. Okay, it's, so it's set up so that it's exactly exactly the thing this thing I had before. Okay. Okay. This is yeah, kind of. I'm the first person to teach this thing in 15 minutes. That's kind of ludicrous, but okay. Okay? Okay? But the thing is that here, you have an alternating sum, so it's possible that there's a lot of cancellation happening. Okay? So we have to see what survives. Okay? So I claim that there's cancellation, and the only terms that remain are tuples of L non-intersecting lattice paths. Okay? And we, and we do this, we show this by building a weight-preserving sign-reversing involution. So what is a weight-preserving sign-reversing? So, so weight-preserving so weight is that we're not, we, we're keeping the, the number of steps we have. We're, we're not changing that. But, but the important thing is the sign-reversing. So IE, we're going to build an, uh, a map, an involution, I, that take, takes a configuration of paths to p to a configuration of paths p prime, so that if 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 if, um, if this should be this should be this shouldn't be a prime here. Uh, if you're not intersecting, you don't do anything, and if 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 um, if, the, if p prime is different from p, it means that so 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 if I send to something different, the sign changes by minus one. Okay. So that's what sign reversing evolution means. And it's an evolution. So if P gets sent to P prime, P prime gets sent to P. Okay? 
So how is such an involution defined? So you start with a collection of paths. If, if the paths have no intersection among themselves, the little paths don't have any intersection among themselves, you don't do anything. If there is an intersection, you find the smallest index i such that pi intersects with another path. Okay. And then in that pi, you find the, the southwest most intersection. Just You want to find a canonical intersection. Okay. So you have, and so there's this intersection v0, and it's intersecting with this path pj. And what does the involution do? It leaves all the paths, all the other paths the same, but it takes these two paths, and here it switches them. So at this stage, the red becomes bl blue, black, and the black becomes blue. Okay? Okay, so you, you just switch them here and let them go wherever their weights. So you send pi pj to p prime i p prime j. So here's an example of what this would do. So here you find the the first the first the first path that intersects. So um, P two intersects, okay, and then you find the southwestmost intersection. So it would be this one, okay, and then you take these two paths, the green and the orange, and here you switch them. So here this becomes green, and this becomes orange. Okay, yes, William. Oh, time? Oh. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, but, uh, like the rightmost, oh. Right -most point? oh, I'm going south. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. This is. Oh, oh no. Okay, yeah, it's, it's southwest. But the thing is that here, there's two. Okay, there's two. There's two potential. Am I saying the right thing? This one. What are we saying? That one. Yeah. So I think maybe I'm doing. Just. Yeah. Okay. Let me see what. The I just have to make a choice. But this one maybe is not southwest. It's. Uh, P two is the. No, you, you s so the smallest index that intersects is P1 doesn't intersect. So you P2 does intersect, and then you pick. So I think the book says. Um, sorry. Yeah, southwest most, but maybe. I mean, you say the first intersection on V naught. Okay, maybe, yeah, okay. I think maybe I swapped the wrong ones then. Maybe I have to swap the, the purple and the green ones. Okay? Yeah, so, yeah, sorry. So, um, but the important thing, well, the important thing is that the sign changed because now you, you your endpoints changed. Okay? And this is an evolution. So if you did it to the one on the right, you would get the one on the left. Okay? So if you have an involution that changes sign, it's going to destroy everything that has an intersection because you're going to see it appearing with opposite sign. OK, so the sign reversing so evolution is going to okay, cancel so, so all the so whenever you paths have a sign reversing that evolution, intersect. You, you destroy everything okay, so that you're that's kind of the magic of sign reversing evolution. You destroy everything where you're, the uh, kind of you're assigning so a sign. The only terms that survive are these only the uh, non-intersecting sums objects. of uh, okay. non-intersecting okay. uh, paths. So in this case, so next time, the topology will show, show that, that um, so it doesn't have choice of starting with the next point. The sign only between the systems where the paths where UI goes to VI survive, so they all have signs of identity. And then these ones are in bijection. Only the terms of the semi-standard permutation will survive. So you're saying there's a bijection between next these time. the non interesting families and semi standard Young tableau of shape lambda, which are the objects indexing 